So hi everyone, I'm Ming Xuan. I'm a fourth year PhD student at USC Annenberg School of Communication and Journalism. Today, I'm very glad to be here to give a presentation on our project, Playing Through the Pandemic, Gaming Usage as a Buffer During the COVID-19. So yeah, so today we're all gathered here to talk about like our fight toward COVID. And indeed, the year of 2019 and 2020 will long be remembered as the era of COVID-19, where uh, like many lives were lost and the global economy was impended and all the like daily norms were disrupted. Amidst all the disruptions of the COVID-19 pandemic, the video games were used heavily, surpassing all other media combined in terms of the revenue, presumably because it could help with the negative mood and social isolation. So our study seeks to understand the effect of such play on well-being with a particular sample World of Tanks players. And we are interested to learn whether different play patterns of uh, change well-being outcomes for players. And was this a case of improving well-being or holding losses at bay? So our study draw on three strands of theories, the uses and grads theory, the mood management theory, and self-determination theory. So according to the mood management theories, media selection were driven by uh, implicit and hedonic needs. So hedonic needs means excitement and stimulation. And uh, if our media selection could satisfy the intrinsic needs, we will experience greater media enjoyment. And later, the mood management theory also incorporates non-hedonic needs in the intrinsic needs realm. And the three non-hedonic needs are autonomy, competence, and relatedness, which was originally uh, proposed in the self-determination theory. According to the self-determination theory, humans have three basic psychological needs, autonomy, competence, and relatedness. Satisfaction of the three will contribute to one's well-being and vice versa. And we also lean on the using and gratification theory because this theory accounts for the broader socioeconomic and environmental factors that influence people's media use, such as like how COVID-19 as a backdrop could influence people's media use. And drawing on these three lines of theories, we propose six hypotheses. So we, first we propose that during the COVID-19, our players will report higher levels of current and future well-being compared to a national sample. So in February 2021, Gallup conducted a survey of national sample and asked the people's current and future levels of well-being. And one of our surveys was also conducted in February 2021, and we intentionally used the same scales of the current and future well-being that was used in the Gallup survey to do a parallel comparison with the national sample. We also predicted that people will spend more time in games during COVID-19 than pre-COVID-19. And people who play more will report higher well-being compared to those who play less. And this will be a larger relationship than the test prior to it. And then we really dive into people's like in-game behaviors, leveraging or access to people's in-game behavior log data. And we predict that People who engage in more social interactions during COVID-19 than pre-COVID-19 will, will report greater perceived relatedness. And players who perform better during the COVID-19 will report greater perceived competence. And increased play will have a stronger association with non-hedonic needs satisfaction during the pandemic than prior to it. And last one is players' hedonic and non-hedonic needs satisfaction altogether will be positively associated with their well-being. And we situate our study in World of Tanks. World of Tanks is a team-based online vehicle combat game allowing for individual and team play. So we work in cooperation with Wargaming, the developer of World of Tanks so that we could get access to play the North American servers players in-game behavior data. And we conducted two waves of surveys. The first one was conducted in April 2019, and this represents the before COVID time. And the second wave was conducted uh, at the late January and early February, and this represents the during COVID time. And February 2021 is near the peak of the US infection and death as reported by the New York Times. And we also matched the survey data with 10 months of behavioral data. 
So all the data were anonymized and when we hashed before sending to the research team, and we are able to combine players' survey data with their in-game behavioral data using that one-way hashed player like spot key. So just more information on the game and on the player than I, um, demographics. So because the game has a very rich historical background, it's situated in World War II, and it features more about strategic play than your reaction times. So it actually attracts a lot of like a wide range of the uh, age. So you can see the age actually ranges from 12 to 80 something. And about 30% of our participants have served in the US Army. So sharing some of our key results here, broadly or sample of players indeed reported higher levels of present and future well-being compared to the national sample. And our players represent already heavy players of the game. And among them, we did see a significant increase in the consistency of their play, but not their intensity of the play. And although we did see more daily gaming among our players, there was no relationship between this increased daily gaming and their psychological well being. However, increases in their gameplay intensity were correlated with increased feelings of competence which was in turn associated with increased psychological well-being. And players who felt higher levels of competence and hedonic need satisfaction during the pandemic were more likely to report higher overall levels of psychological well-being. So in conclusion, some takeaway messages, gameplay in our sample provided a buffer against declines in well-being as a type of psychological maintenance Whereas our game appears to have delivered a psychological buffer for its players broadly, but has perhaps more social and supportive environments will generate more positive outcomes for those seeking socialization, such as the game Animal Crossing during the COVID-19. But yeah, this is our team. And thank you for listening. And let me know if you have any questions or comments.